I don't know if I'm ready. I don't know. Can't be certain. What's going on guys? My name is Doug. Welcome to the video. I'm very happy that you guys decided to stop by today as we are going to be listening to The Weeknd's latest album, After Hours. It is finally here. The time has finally come. And after three singles that I absolutely love, I believe he dropped a fourth, but I didn't listen to it. I am just ready to dive into these 11 new tracks that The Weeknd has just dropped. I don't know what to expect. He is just on another level right now with these singles that he is dropping. So I am extremely excited, needless to say. I don't want to waste your time with an intro that is extremely long. I don't feel the need to. I don't really know what to say even, you know, to, to make a really long intro. But uh, what I will say is this. If you watch this video and you end up enjoying it, be sure to show some love to the channel however you see fit. You know how to support YouTube channels. And this month's episode of Putting Y'all On dropped yesterday, so all the submissions that I get on my Instagram DMs will be for next month's episode, which will drop on the 15th of April, God willing. If nothing comes up, if I don't get sick, if things like that, if everything goes according to plan, it'll drop on the 15th. So be sure to get your submissions in by then, that is the deadline. And with that said, let's jump right into this, man. I am so ready. The first track is called Alone Again. I don't know whether I'm gonna cry. I don't know whether I'm gonna scream. I don't know, but we'll find out together. The synth bass and the little bells are awesome. Arpeggio in the background is nuts. The synths. Oh my god. So the opener is brilliant. I mean, that really long build up into the beat actually dropping is so cinematic and it's so ethereal and atmospheric and his angelic vocals over the the very low key like synth bass and the the synth keys behind him as well as the little bells like all of that just is, it sounds so dreamy it sounds like he's not even real and then when the beat actually drops and 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 we get the more aggressive synths and the more aggressive bass and the the harder hitting instrumentals then his voice really takes a backseat and becomes just super light and airy and again feels almost like a ghostly presence in the track it's so interesting to listen to uh, it's a very cinematic opener to say the least and i think that his performance is great it's soft sweet angelic as always i love the falsettos i love you know everything about the way that he sang this track and it's just a really brilliant opener for the project. I love it. I think it's great. Next track is Too Late. This man is hurting, bro. Yeah. Oh man, here it comes. There's this little... I don't know how to describe it. It sounds like it's percussion, but it's really heavily edited and there's a bunch of filters over it. But if you listen to the offbeats, when the drums um, or basically in the spaces between the different drum sounds, there are little fills going on. Very subtle, very understated, but there are little fills going up leading into the kicks or coming out of, you know, the coming off of the snares and things like that to add a little bit of like a tribal or a like a dance hall slash Caribbean kind of feel to this. Uh, I think it's really interesting and I think that the, the keys, the melodies and the synths are so vibrant, so bright, and in stark contrast to like the uh, the darker sounding drums, you know? But uh, I I'm just, I'm loving the way that this beat hit, the way that it dropped, it sounds fantastic to me. That bass is killer. Let's go. Wow. This little bridge is so heavenly. I mean, 
I've heard three singles, loved them. Heard the intro, loved it. Heard this track, loved it. He's five for five. And every, tra every track sounds unique from, from the last. And none of them sound repetitive. None of, none of them sound like uh, he's given us the same formula over and over again. They all sound like they're in the similar vein of, of like this strange mixture between like uh, darker music with the, the grittier drums and the bright, vibrant synths, you know? Um, but all of them have different rhythms, all of them have different approaches from him and, and, and different styles. And still, they all sound like they fit together so well on this project. And I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. Um, I'm, I'm absolutely loving it. This sounded awesome, in my opinion. Four minutes long, normally I would say that's too long for a track. I barely noticed here, you know. So that's just a testament to how good this track is, in my opinion. Track three, Hardest to Love. He sounds like he's hurt. He sounds like he's hurt somebody. He's apologetic, but at the same time, he has no regrets because he was hurt by this person and he just wants to party it up. And oh my God, like it's classic The weekend. Starting off kind of like an 80s ballad. Wow. And I can see right through the so normally you would have expected this to be double timed and to have the snare hitting on every third beat, um, but he actually chose to put the snare on every two and four and, and have it be a really fast paced drum pattern uh, juxtaposed with his slower performance. I think that's pretty interesting. Uh, it doesn't sound bad. Oh man. Yeah, so like I said, very interesting to hear him singing so slowly over a very fast-paced beat. And there's this just like crazy mix of emotions between I'm so apologetic and I'm so sorry because I've been so hard to love and I've made things so difficult for you. But at the same time, this music makes me want to move. It makes me want to dance and it sounds fun, you know? So playing on, on our emotions that way is so interesting. You know, I think the production so far has just been outstanding. He makes beautiful use of the synths, um, the more angelic little bells in the background. Forgive all the noise in the background, by the way. There's always a lot of bikes and buses driving outside, but yeah, he's just made brilliant use of those synths. And, and I think that everything has just sounded brilliant so far. Next track is Scared to Live. Yeah, that's probably one of the more normal sounding songs so far, you know, nothing too crazy going on with the synths and no very unexpected drum patterns, anything like that. This is a more straightforward ballad from The Weeknd. And basically, uh, again, along that same vein of being super apologetic for breaking this person's heart and telling her not to be scared to live again is what I'm getting from it. Basically telling her not to be afraid to open herself up to being in another relationship or, or to you know, fall in love again. Um, and, and it sounds beautiful. His performance is ridiculous. Uh, the, the production is so beautiful. That little, uh, that little breakdown portion where he's like, na 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 It sounds, I don't know. It's, it's just something that you're not really expecting. And then when it happens, you realize how perfect it is. You know what I mean? So uh, that's a beautiful track. One of the more approachable songs, you know, like I said, it's one of the easiest to listen to just because of how n normal or traditional it is, I guess. But um, still, it's a beautiful song. Next track is Snow Child. I like right now how, again, traditional, I guess, this, this production is. There's nothing too experimental about it. Straight up, really nice drum pattern, uh, beautiful keys, very easy on the ears. And he's basically singing about how he came up you know, walking around the streets of Toronto and it's cold and it's snowy and he had nothing to believe in and he was depressed and if he didn't make it, he would have slit his wrists and just talking about his dreams and aspirations and wanting to make it so bad and what it was like to be in that situation. 
um, and kind of talking about how he came up. So I think it's really interesting and I'm paying attention to the lyrics here because production wise there isn't a whole lot going on, you know, so still sounds great. <laughs> Or stack a, a couple M's like I'm shady. Who's, who said that? I'm gonna remember it. Stacked a couple M's like I'm shady. That's J. Cole. When I get something into my head, I can't, I, I gotta find it. It is J. Cole. I knew it. Yeah, it's K.O.D. I stacked a few M's like my last name was shady. Yeah, that's what it is. I knew it. I knew it. I'm loving this track, bro. Yeah, it's a track where he talks about how he came up and how he made it and how he didn't have anything to believe in, but now that he's made it, he, you know, he's super happy with where he's at and, and the production's really beautiful. I love the little synths and the, the synth bass and the, the keys. All of it is just so beautiful. It's so relaxing. It's so soothing, you know, and his performance is just so airy, so light, so angelic and uh, soft. I think it's just, it sounds great. It's a beautiful song. Next track is Escape from LA. I'm so happy I caught that shady bar. Is he gonna go 14 for 14? processed his vocals right they, they added this reverb and they added this delay but not only did they delay his vocals they pitched them up and down to make them sound like the uh the echoes are a part of the production itself you know so i think that that's really creative it's a really brilliant use of the the uh effects on his vocals it sounds great it just adds another layer of like depth to the track i think it's super Nice touch, man. It's the seasoning on the track that makes it special. These drums are great, too, especially the hats. Oh, man, there's also a pitched little vocal sample going on in the background that sounds super nice, too. Uh, reminds me a lot of the things that Drake does sometimes with the production, you know, having like a really high pitched vocal sample really quietly in the background. Of each other. That bass is so nice. Having him sing us out like that with just barely any drums, or no, no drums, barely any instrumentals is, uh, is perfect for this track. Again, it's almost six minutes long and uh, it feels like it's about four minutes long. You know, you don't really notice the time passing because of how lost you get in the production and his vocals and what he's saying and the picture he's painting with his lyrics. Um, you know, it's super interesting and, and the time just flies by. Uh, it's great music and normally, I mean, I would be repeating myself over and over again. The track's too long, track's too long, track's too long. Normally, anytime a track goes over three minutes, 30 seconds, I find it hard to stay focused and to be invested in the song, but he has just got my attention. You know, it's gripping. The music is just undeniably good. You know, it's captivating is what it is. It's hypnotizing. So um, look at me using a bunch of different adjectives. Next track would be Heartless. I've heard that already. There's a reaction on my channel. Be sure to check that out after this video if you're interested in that. We're gonna be moving on to track eight, which is Fate. But by the way, so far, um, it, if I had never listened to any of these tracks, he would have been seven for seven up until this point. You know what I mean? We're on track eight now. Seven tracks that I, no skips, no issues with any of the tracks, nothing. Like perfect so far. So, I mean, this is really, I, I almost feel like I'm hyping it up too much, but I don't know, you know, it's so good. Is this the music he used for like the little snippets he posted on Instagram? It's such an interesting combination of like R&B vocals and hip hop hats, but it's got like an EDM 
bass, kick, and snare, you know? It's such an interesting fusion of different sounds that he just makes work. <laughs> snare and I think it's so funny because if we're ever in, in our DAWs as we're producing and we're about to pick our snare and we're clicking through a bunch of them to listen to them and to choose the snare this is the snare we always skip this is the one that sounds too like staticky it's the one that, that doesn't sound right for our tracks and, and I, I, I swear to god I must have skipped this snare a bunch of times and now I'm listening to it in this track and it sounds perfect I don't know what he did to it but I'm, I'm telling you, I'm certain I've skipped this snare a bunch of times before, and now it's working for some reason. No words for that outro, man. It's just beautiful. Like I, like I mentioned during the track, you know, I gave some opinions already, but I'm just loving the fusion of different genres uh, and the sound choices that normally would accompany those genres and he's just blending them all together and making them work eight for eight You know, I mean, it's a beautiful track. I love the the pitching of his vocals uh, I love that portion when he he sounds like it's a bun It's like a bunch of his same vocals layered and they're all singing in the same octave It sounds almost like a Gregorian, you know, <laughs> male choir um, And it's just him. Uh, it sounds super epic Just a, a bunch of those different arrangements that they did with his vocals in this track were really interesting um, so yeah, that's a really awesome song. Again, super atmospheric, super easy to get lost in, very wavy, love it. Track 9 is Blinding Lights, I've also reacted to that. It's actually in the same video as the Heartless reaction, I did them both at the same time, so, um, well, in one video, not at the same time, but you get it. Uh, so we're gonna be skipping on to track 10, which is In Your Eyes. <laughs> that's not Kenny G. I'm gonna look that up now because if that's Kenny G I might lose it. Trumpet Magnus Johansson and, and Jan Bjerger. Trombone is Peter Noos Johansson. Tenor sax is Thomas Johnson. Alto sax is uh, Wajtek Goral. Okay all right awesome. Fantastic job on the horns seriously but um God, it would have been nuts if that was Kenny G dude. I feel like if it were Kenny G it would have been listed here you know as a feature. Yeah, the swing to the track is just brilliant. Uh, it's super 80s pop, you know what I mean? Loving the guitar, very, very funky, groovy bass line, awesome horns, really brilliant job on the horns. Super vibrant, super bright, emphatic and triumphant. The way that horns are supposed to sound, I love them. Not supposed to, you can do whatever you want with horns, but you get what I mean. Um, it's so satisfying to hear them that way, you know? And he's killing it with his performance, um, absolutely killing it. I, I, at this point, I'm just experiencing it. You know, I don't really, I'm at a loss for words. My throat's dry from how much I've been talking. I'm just enjoying myself here now. But um, I would be willing to say, even though we have four tracks left, well, I've, I've heard after hours, so three new tracks left, um, I would already be willing to say this is top three this year so far, you know, just already. 10 tracks, he's 10 for 10. This is top three this year so far. Probably alongside Circles and, uh, shoot, maybe either a written testimony or um, Eternal to Take. Put those four in the top five and choose, I don't know, the Eminem album at the fifth spot, I guess. This is a brilliant project already. Next track is Save Your Tears. <laughs> This almost sounds like something that you would hear in like H&M or something like that, you know? Just really poppy, really like, again, kind of like an 80s retro vibe to it. Um, probably one of my least favorites so far, just because it sounded a little bit more formulaic than everything else that I've heard so far, you know? Uh, it sounded a little more... Uh, 
I don't know, it just wasn't as captivating or as interesting as some of these other tracks, in my opinion, but maybe it's a grower. You know, maybe I'm just a little fatigued after listening to so many tracks, and maybe maybe it'll sound better to me on a, on a subsequent listen. Uh, next track is Repeat After Me, Interlude. production is just brilliant there. It's got a bunch of little counter melodies and, and offbeat percussion going on in the background and I'm assuming it's going to be panned when you listen to it with headphones on. All of it just to really add that little bounce to it, that swing to it. His performance is great. Very smooth, relaxing um, as an interlude is kind of supposed to be. It's like a breath of fresh air. But for these last two tracks, and especially since these last two tracks combined add up to over nine minutes, you know, we needed this little breath of fresh air before them. Um, but track 13 is After Hours. I have a reaction to that on my channel. Be sure to check that out after you check out the Heartless and Blinding Lights, re Blinding Lights reaction. And uh, the last track of the day, track 14, Until I Bleed Out. It's perfect that it is an actual outro. It's not just a song and then the album's over. It actually closes us out. It actually has that same cinematic feeling like you're almost watching a movie that the intro had, you know? So it does play us out of the project. There's a sense of conclusion, you know? There's a sense of closure there uh, that is great. I think it's a beautiful song. I think that playing around with the synths is brilliant. You know, just the atmosphere to the track in itself is so awesome. It's epic, it's cinematic, it's intriguing, it's creative. His vocals are crazy, you know, they're, they're impeccable, really. Um, and it's an awesome track to close us out. So after hours by the weekend, um, it's everything that I wanted it to be. It's absolutely spectacular. Every single track is so easy to listen to. Every single track is so fun to listen to. Every single track is, is interesting and intriguing and captivating, and they all are so varied in genres and in styles, but they fit so well together on a, tr on a project. You know, there's cohesion. Uh, there's a very clear path to the emotional um, responses that this album wants you to have. You know what I mean? Going from happier to sad to happier to sad. That, just that, that, that clear path all the way through, toying with your emotions. Um, Abel's vocals are spectacular. You know, they... they are heart-wrenching and he is so apologetic and unapologetic at the same time. Um, if I had to rate this, I'd, I'd give it like an eight, eight and a half, maybe higher. You know, it's, it's really, really good. One of the best projects I've heard all year, probably in my top three. Thoroughly enjoyed listening to it all the way through. I'm so happy that we finally got it. I'm so happy with the way it turned out. The weekend really killed it, you know, and he did even better than I was expecting him to. So uh, let me know what you guys think about the project in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, support the channel any way that you see fit. And uh, I will be back in another video very soon. So until then, stay safe, stay home, wash your hands, and peace out.